Hello world, I'm Nick, and in this video, we're going to look at a crucial part of C-sharp development, which is dependency injection. If you guys have watched my videos before, you know that I focus mainly on C-sharp, .NET content. I also cover quite a lot of the Microsoft stack and software engineering in general. So if you want more video content like that, then please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me to bring you lots more great .NET content. So what is dependency injection? Well, dependency injection is a design pattern that allows us to decouple elements of our application. So very often in C Sharp, we're creating classes that become dependencies. We're dependent on these classes to do things in our application. And so what you start to see is a lot of new this class, new that class. And so what dependency injection does is instead of the class creating its own dependencies every single time it needs them, we actually create them in one place and we make them available to be injected into a class. So this massively improves flexibility because it means that we can create these dependencies outside of the classes and then when we need them, we can inject them in. And also if we need to swap things out, we can do so in one place without having to change a whole bunch of things throughout our code base. So let's go straight into an example. This is an example that does not use dependency injection at the moment. So you can see here, we've got a console application and in our main method, we're creating a dependency. We're creating a new instance of a class English greeter. This class is a class which implements I greeter, so it implements an interface that says it must have a greet method. So passing in a name, you've got a greet method and it should do something. In this case, it will write hello and then that person's name out to the console. Very simple. So in, in main, we're creating a new instance of English greeter and then we're saying call the greet method on that greeter and we know it's going to be English, so they're going to say hello and then the name in this case is Alice. So in cases like this, in a very simple, tiny application, this is probably fine. You know, if we just say, well, it's always gonna be an English greeter, then we'll just new up that class and then we'll call the greet method. But I'd probably argue that if you've got an English greeter, it probably means that at some point you're going to need to create some other kind of greeter. You're probably gonna have support for other languages. And what you don't want to have to do is to say, okay, actually I'm changing this greeter to Spanish or German. I'm going to have to go through and find every instance where that is referenced and change it to a different class. It's just a bit of a nightmare at that point. It's not scalable. It's not flexible. So how do we convert this into something which uses dependency injection? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is just remove this original logic in main. We're not going to use that anymore, but we will still use the iGreeter interface and we'll still have this English greeter class. The first thing we're gonna do to make this possible is to install a package. So you can see at the top of my project, I've got Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. So in whatever IDE you're using, if it's Visual Studio or Rider, whatever it is, you need to use NuGet to install that package. So if you install that package, then we can then reference the dependency injection libraries that we need. Now that we're then referencing that package because it's installed in this project, we can start writing the code to facilitate dependency injection in this console app. So in order to provide dependencies which can be injected, we need something called a service collection. So I'm gonna create a variable called service collection, and it's just gonna be a new service collection. Think of this as kind of like the basket that holds all of the different classes or dependencies that you want to inject in different places within your code. We're going to refer to them as services. So where you had English greeter before as just a class, we're going to be referring to that as a service from now on. So we need to add that as a service to this collection. So we say service collection dot add but you can see here, there's a whole bunch of different options that we have when we're adding something. Add transient, add singleton. What does that mean? Well, the reality is that you're not just adding a service and being done with it at that point. You're having to specify the lifetime of that service, the scope of that service. How long does that service need to stick around? When you're using it, what context are you using it in? And this sounds a lot more complicated than it is. We can whittle this down to three main types of lifetime. The first one I want to mention is singleton. So we can say add singleton, 
and this provides a singleton lifetime. This will be a service which is around for the lifetime of your application. So you may have heard of the singleton design pattern. It's the same idea. It's the idea that there is one instance that is available throughout the whole life cycle of the application. So whenever you reference a singleton service, it's gonna be the same instance every single time. Now this is great if you want a class which is expensive to create, or if it needs to maintain the same state throughout the whole application's lifecycle. But in our case, we don't necessarily need that. Another one we can talk about is scoped. So add scoped will create a scoped service, and a scoped service is around for the lifetime of a HTTP request, or maybe not specifically a HTTP, but a client request. So whenever a request comes into your application, in most cases as an API request using HTTP, then that request can use a scoped service and that service is only initialized for the lifetime of that request. So the whole state of that dependency is specifically linked to whichever request is using it. The one we want is called transient. So add transient will create a transient service. And this is more akin to what you see when you're newing up classes. So if you use a transient service, you're creating an instance every time you reference it. So this is useful for us because you would normally use this if you want just a clean, lightweight dependency that is fine to be used multiple times and to have its own state. So then we've established that we're adding transient. We then do transient of T. So we can specify what type this is. Now there are two parameters that I'm gonna pass into this. I'm going to pass in I greeter. So I'm saying that whatever the transient is, it's going to be an I greeter. But I'm also going to specify what the concrete class is. So the class which is implementing that interface. So English greeter. So here we're saying when the application starts, create a service collection and then add a transient dependency, one that will be newed up when we need it. And then it will be implementing I greeter. And for this one specifically, it's an English greeter. I'm also then going to add another service, which is also transient. And it, this time, instead of it being I greeter, it's going to be program. I'm basically saying, take the class I'm currently in and inject that. This is specific to console applications because I, what I want to inevitably do is call this class and call a method called run which will execute some logic that uses these services. So it basically means that I can get an instance of program using dependency injection and then call that using other services like English Greeter. So then to build that service collection, you can see we've got a suggestion here, which is to create a service provider. And that is the result of the service collections build service provider function. So once you've done that, you've got a service provider that you can use for dependency injection. So an example of that will be where we try to get a new instance of program. So we'll say program equals service provider dot get service of type program. Now there's a few things I need to change on program itself to make this work. I need to add a new constructor for program. So I'm gonna do public program, and then I'm actually going to give this a parameter. Uh, and this will be a dependency that we inject into program when it's initialized. So I'm gonna say that this takes an I greeter called greeter. And we're able to do that because we have an I greeter set in the service collection that we can inject in. And then I'm going to have a private field of type iGreeter, and I'm going to call it underscore greeter, which means I can then set that from here. So when program is instantiated, we can inject the iGreeter, and that will be there. And then I'm going to create a void method called run. It's not going to take any parameters, and it's simply going to call greeter.greet and then it's gonna pass in a hard-coded name for now. We can also change this whenever we need to, but for now, I'm just gonna say for the iGreeter that we've got, it's just an iGreeter. We don't care if it's an English greeter or some other kind of greeter, we just call greet. And then from main, we can just call program.run. So let's just give this a go. I'm gonna debug this and step through it. So first we create our instance of service collection. 
we add the transient and the program and now you can see service collection has two services it does the build so we can see here we've got a serv service provider created we can see the services in there we can get a service from the service provider of type program which we have it's expecting a greeter which will be English greeter because that's part of the service provider so this has already happened you can see here in fact if I start this again and then just breakpoint the constructor you can see the greeter that's been passed in is an English greeter so it's just implicitly known that that is an English greeter and we can hold that here because it implements iGreeter and then we can use it and then we step onto run and we do greeter.greet and it says hello Alice so if we wanted to then change this to say right now this console app is Spanish and it's going to start using an iGreeter but it's an Spanish greeter and it's going to do the same thing in Spanish then we can essentially just add this again we can just change this here to Spanish greeter and if you had lots of different pieces of code which reference that same greeter they're all updated in one line. So this is what I'm saying in terms of the flexibility and the neatness, because you could argue that actually, if I wanted to change this to Spanish greeter, then I could just say, well, change this class to a different name and then change the functionality and then change the new English greeter to new Spanish greeter, which is again, absolutely fine on this small scale. But what dependency injection does on a wider scale, on a more realistic scale for say an enterprise application where you've got multiple references to this kind of class, English Greeter, then you don't wanna to have to fix that or change that in all of the places where it's referenced. You wanna just change the specific dependency which is injected and then everything else falls into place. It also makes it super easy from a testing perspective because if you're using dependency injection to mock classes, then again, all of the classes that are being mocked in your tests will also change. So it is a best practice. Like any of these kind of clean code practices, I would say use some common sense. If you're just running a tiny script and you just need a class that does a thing, you don't need to worry about this sort of stuff. But especially in things like web APIs, it's very important to think about how you're going to cleanly provide dependencies to your logic and to split those out so they're not getting coupled together. So just to demonstrate another example, I've created a web API project. This is a totally fresh project. I'm not doing anything to it, just using the template. And in the program.cs, we can see we've got builder.services. So this is exactly the same thing. It's a service provider. We've got this web application .create builder line, which is creating a web application. And then within that application, there is a service provider. And so as you saw in the console app, we can do services.add. And so you can use exactly the same principles to create your dependencies in one place. And then throughout your web application, you can just inject into a constructor and you've got what you need in the life cycle or the scope that is appropriate to your use case. So I hope that was useful. I think the dependency injection can often seem way more complicated than it is. Just saying the term dependency injection often makes people think, I don't know where to start. How that sounds really complicated. And hopefully with this, you can see that actually it's quite simple. You just need to be able to identify the best life cycle. So do I need transient? Do I need singleton? Do I need scoped? And once you've got that, you're using interfaces to describe your objects and away you go. Your dependency injection is being used to make things flexible and clean in your .NET applications. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I'll see you soon for some more great .NET content.